Um, now there is one thing that I think is really important to talk about, and it's something that I don't often hear or see in text, and that is the phonological working memory. Now, mm -hmm. working memory itself is that mental um, whiteboard or scratch pad in your brain, and there's only a finite amount of information that you can hold there. And what's really important for educators to understand, especially with the struggling reader, if they don't have automaticity for the letter sound or the grapheme phoneme correspondence, then it's gonna take them time and it's gonna use up that store. So when they're sounding out the word, they may forget what the first sound was and it's gonna impact their comprehension of reading a sentence because again, they don't have the ability to hold all the other information because they're putting too much focus and time into sounding out the word. Mm -hmm. So it's very important um, when that happens, of course, uh, one way we can start to support kids and holding on to those um, skills is again, back to that systematic, that explicit and systematic way of teaching students. So for example, um, if I am going to start teaching students how to blend sounds together, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with sounds that are continuous. And by, by that, I mean sounds that I could hold on to the sounds till I could probably pass out. <laughs> You know, uh, until, uh, for example, when uh, maybe where you are, make the sound for uh, the P, for the graphing P. So I'll make it, you make it too, okay? Okay, so that's um, a stop sound, right? That means because I'm making a quick burst of air and the sound stops. So stop sounds are around for a very brief time. Now, listen to me um, make another sound um, for the grapheme S, ready? <laughs> so, of course, that sounds a lot around a lot longer. So it, the students are able to keep it in their phonological memory. So if I was uh, beginning teaching students how to blend with a CV, a consonant, a vowel, or a vowel consonant, I would start with uh, continuous sounds. So, for example, we're like so or sun, and then ask them to blend that together and say sun. Um, oftentimes when I visit classrooms, uh, teachers will say, well, my students can't blend a CVC. And I'll say, well, tell me about some of the, um, you know, sounds that you're asking them to blend together. And they might say like cat or dog. So cat or dog, dog. So of course the vowels there, I could hold on to longer because vowels are open sounds and continue. But um, the k and the t and the d and the g, <laughs> they're all uh, stop sounds. So um, if we know about this really important scope and sequence, if we understand about going from least complex to most complex, it, it helps students build this knowledge over time in a way that makes sense. So I would start with a sun or um, before I'd ever go to something like a cat or a dog for a CDC, because I would want them to have the opportunity to um, hear those sounds. It's called connected phonation. That's a big <laughs> teacher word for it. But um, to begin with these continuous sounds, and I think it goes back to what um, Catherine was saying. Um, these were things, of course, that I didn't learn in college. Um, I didn't learn as, as a reading specialist. Um, I was a national board certified teacher. That wasn't part of my process either. So um, knowing these things, you know, when I did learn them, make me a better teacher um, because I can use this knowledge, but you know, we always say, as she said, it's a no shame zone. Um, a year from now, if Catherine would invite me back, I would likely know something that I don't know now that I wish I would have been able to tell you tonight. <laughs> so as teachers, um, we always have the responsibility of learning, right? And so when we look uh, that the saying is when we know better, we do better. But that's one thing uh, when we think about phonics um, um, that we can, you know, we begin with speech. Right? And so by knowing about the speech sense of the language, it helps me be a better teacher um, and knowing how to um, plan my instruction. Yes, of course. And I think it's important to highlight that you were talking about, you know, the S and the U and the N being continuous sounds. Well, as we mentioned earlier, if you're teaching students their phonics from A to Z, well, those are near the end of the alphabet. So the easier sounds for them to work and manipulate with when they're just at the beginning or near the end of the alphabet. So how many weeks in or how many letters into the alphabet would you have to be before you could start using these as examples to start working with them? Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as my students know, um, as soon as they would know, for example, um, how to blend and segment sun, sun, 
I would be mapping that to uh, print right away, right? Because, um, you know, there are means to an end. Phonemic awareness is essential, but of course it's a means to an end. So if I can uh, blend sun, if I as a teacher said sun, and I said blend it together and they said sun, or if I said sun and they said sun, right? Immediately I would be like <laughs> getting on my little paddle. You know, yeah. we might be moving the sounds down, but right away then we would say uh, sound was and then, um, you know, what grapheme or letter represents that sound would be S, right? Uh, what sound? Uh, what grapheme represents that sound? U, right? Uh, what sound? N, what grapheme represents that sound? That's N, what's our word? Sun, <laughs> that I would be writing it down here. And then we would talk, be talking about the meaning of that word, right? Um, so um, it's, these things, kind of, they work together. They are complementary, right? Um, um, phonemic awareness and phonics, they go hand in hand. And